Good evening. Um, my name is Kendra Wood. I'm the coordinator of Advising, and I would like to welcome you to this evening's um, information night um, for Rappahannock Community College. Um, we thank you so much for attending our info night tonight, and um, we are going to get right to it. Um, I'm going to start off with our agenda for this evening. And um, if you could, please mute yourself. Um, that's a, a bit of house. Mute yourself. And if you do have questions throughout um, this evening's session, you can type in the chat box um, and you can type to everyone. And um, our Dean will kind of monitor and will answer questions at the end. So this evening's agenda includes um, going over our degree and certificate options, um, getting started at RCC, financial aid, student support services, and um, library, tutoring and disability services, student activities, and Q&A. And I'm going to take a quick second to um, make sure everybody's muted. Alrighty, so um, I know it was some feedback there, so I'll go over it one more time. Our agenda tonight will cover the different degree and certificate options that we have available, um, how to really get started here at RCC. We're going to hear from our financial aid office and learn a little bit about that process. Um, we'll hear from student support services, our library, um, and we'll get some information about tutoring, disability services, and student activities. In about the last 10 minutes of this um, session, we will open it up um, to answer questions. So if you think of questions throughout this evening, please um, type in the chat box and we will um, answer those questions at the end. Just a uh, housekeeping announcement. Um, tonight's session is general, um, but we will be having a um, few more sessions next week to include health sciences, um, workforce development, uh, financial aid, and dual enrollment. So if you um, want some more information about these offerings at Rappahannock Community College, please, please um, plan to attend and register for one of those information nights as well. And now um, we are going to hear from um, our advising specialist, Ms. Kelly Oswana, to talk to us about our degree options. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. What you're looking at now are all of our degree program. There's some tabs across the top. You see the transfer program um, is highlighted first. The way to get to this is if you go to our Rappahannock site and you look under academics, just click on academics and these five tabs will come up. So the transfer program, just what it sounds like, these programs, arts and sciences, business administration, et cetera, that you see on the page now, these are anywhere from um, 60 to 63 credits. They are an associate degree of arts and sciences. If it says business administration, that's a specialization. Same with criminal justice and some of the other ones. These uh, programs are geared and put together with the classes inside the program that most of the four-year colleges want. We worked with them on this. So when you finish these degrees, and you meet the GPA or grade point average that's required by the four-year college, um, then you get guaranteed transfer admission into the college or university. Um, and so that's what the transfer programs are. These are for students who are intending to go on to a four-year school and finish their, finish their bachelor's degrees. Um, the next tab is the <clears throat> career study certificate um, programs. These range anywhere from nine credits to 27 credits. 
You can get them done pretty quickly. Um, we have quite a few options here. There are a lot of pre-nursing, pre-paramedic, pre, anything that says pre before it are the uh, general education courses or the prerequisites you need to finish to make application, for instance, to the nursing program, to some of the um, other programs or medical laboratory technology. But these are some quick and easy um, career study certificates that you can get and like I said, they are between nine and 27 credits. And um, in terms of getting started um, at RCC, um, one of the very first things you'll wanna do is apply to the college. Um, now, if you were a dual enrollment student um, at one of the local high schools, um, you are already a student. Um, so you could reach out to us um, and we can look you up and find your student ID number and then talk you through the different next steps that you um, would have. And so um, on the screen here, you see our lovely advising team. Um, and so they will be some of the folks that you talk to when you first come um, and into RCC. Uh, we will go over what degree you want to study. Um, we'll work out your academic plan and, and deciding on what um, classes you will take, how many classes you will take, um, just mapping out that pathway. Uh, we'll talk through your placement. Um, so um, maybe we'll look at your high school GPA and the classes that you took, um, or we'll look at SAT or ACT scores. And um, right now during um, the COVID-19 situation, uh, most everything has transitioned to online. So we have some workarounds for placement and the, the Virginia placement test. So if we find that um, you don't, we're unable to use your high school GPA um, and uh, what classes you took, we can work around and um, use some other things to figure out where you place and what classes you should get started with. And we'll work on um, getting you registered for your classes. So um, if you have already applied to the college, you're most welcome to email us at advisor at rappahannock.edu to schedule an advising appointment. Um, or if you're savvy and you've logged into my RCC before, you can also go into what's called Navigate and schedule a new student advising appointment to meet with us. And we'll um, work through those next steps. But First two things, apply to RCC and um, go ahead and get an advising meeting set up uh, with us. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Jill Quinlan to talk to us about our financial aid. All right, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we have a wonderful group of um, staff and faculty here at Rappahannock Community College. And I work in the financial aid department with the women that you see on the slide here. Um, Mary Tomek is on the call as well. Um, she will be kind of filling in anything that I may forget to say to you. Um, but first and foremost, I wanted to provide you with how you can get in touch with us. So we have a very generic, the financial aid at rappahannock.edu email. So that's easy to remember. Um, you can always submit questions to us by that email address. Um, you can also call the financial aid hotline that's listed on the slide. And one of us will get back to you. Um, we are in the process of updating our financial aid page on the website to make it more, much more organized. And so we are going to put all of our contact information up there. Um, you may hear directly back from one specific financial aid person. Um, and so you'll have our information at that time. But for now, you can use the main numbers and email address. All right, so the first thing that you need to do to see if you qualify for financial aid is to apply for financial aid. Um, everybody is entitled to federal, to apply for the free, the federal student aid. Um, it's called FAFSA for short, but it stands for free application for federal student aid. And so there's no fee to submit this application. So I encourage everybody to apply 
because it's free. And if you're, if you meet the eligibility criteria, then you will get financial aid. And so it also helps us determine at the, at the financial aid office, we have different types of funding available. Um, this is to apply for federal and state funding to see what you're eligible for. Um, but we also offer scholarships. And so if you have a financial aid, a FAFSA on file with us and we have that information, we can better determine your financial need. Um, the next bullet down mentions a priority deadline of April 15th, but that that's just priority deadline. The sooner you get it in for certain types of aid, um, the more you may be eligible for uh, because like for instance, state funding, um, there's a limit on that. And so once it's gone, it's gone. So I encourage you to submit this application tomorrow if you have time, it only takes about 30 minutes. If you have everything that you need, all the information you need together and we'll get to that. Um, but I've also included on here our college code. Now, this is something as you go through the FAFSA application, you know, each question on the application, it will have a little question mark beside it that you can hover over or click on that will provide you with additional information on how to answer that question. What, what exactly they're looking for? Because sometimes the questions you may go, I'm not sure what they mean. Um, so just click on that little question mark and it'll help you answer it. Um, but you will get to the question where it asks you to put the college code on there. And so I've provided that here, it's 009160. I don't expect you to remember that. Um, I believe we will be sending this PowerPoint presentation to you in a PDF format so that you can have this to reference later and go through on your own. That's why we've included the links here so that you can click right on them and it'll take you where you need to be. Um, so for the FAFSA application, here you will see that you'll need to go to studentaid.gov. Um, I've also included a toll-free number. Um, there's a toll-free number directly to the FAFSA call center. So if you are having trouble with in answering any other questions or understanding what you need to do next when you're completing that FAFSA application, you can call that number and I've actually had to do that. I just submitted a FAFSA application for my daughter who's going to college and there was something on it that I had a question about. And so I called and I got through and they answered my question and it was, it was great customer service. Um, so I, I highly recommend starting with that number if you have any questions about the FAFSA. You can call our office, but what our office does is um, we receive, once your FAFSA application is processed, they send us a report that tells us how much you can afford of the cost of attending Rappahannock Community College. And so it tells us how much aid to award you. So we're not experts by any means on every particular question on that FAFSA application. That's why I'm recommending you start with the call center first, um, but you're certainly welcome to reach out to us as well and we will do our best with the knowledge that we have to answer your questions. Um, okay, and the last bullet point there, I've included a little video and I think it's between one and three minutes, um, just tips for completing the FAFSA. So it'll tell you like before you start, these are the documents you should have or the information you should have at hand to better assist you in completing the application. Um, for instance, you'll need your tax return information from two years ago. If it's not yours, it may be your parents, depends on if you're a dependent or independent. Um, student. And so um, one thing I want to say about the tax information is if your tax information, if you filed online, there is an IRS data retrieval tool. When you get to that question, you can choose that option and it'll automatically pull over your data from the IRS. But if you submitted your, your taxes, just mailed them the paper format, then you probably need to have a copy of those handy when you're filling out the FAFSA application. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so we are moving right along since we're holding questions for the end. Um, I, wanna, I wanted to let you know what to expect after you submit your FAFSA application. So whatever email you put on your FAFSA application, you'll need to check that email regularly. Um, you'll receive, and I, I spelled it out here for you so you'll know that it's not spam or junk, um, but you'll receive an email from the U.S. Department of Education 
and they're going to let you know that you've submitted your application successfully and that your information will sit over to the colleges that you listed on your application and what your next steps are. So you can actually um, add up to 10 colleges on your application. And I recommend that if you're unsure of, you know, if you've applied to different schools and you're just not sure if you're gonna get in or which one you want to actually go to, um, list all of them. That way all the schools have the information and they can have a preliminary, preliminary um, financial aid award package ready for you when you make your decision. All right, so after you receive that email, what you're gonna to wanna to do, or even after you submit the FAFSA, you can go ahead and apply to Rappahannock Community College. And if you click on this link, it's gonna take you to the place on our website where you can apply. So I've tried to make it easy for you. Um, and then you'll schedule an appointment with an advisor um, to set up, to figure out which academic program that you want to um, get set up in. And that's really important because if you are awarded financial aid, especially federal and state, you, um, they will, it will only cover classes that are in the academic program that you've committed to. Um, so if you're in nursing, then you need to take classes that are in the nursing program in order for financial aid to cover it. Okay. All right. And so the importance of going ahead and applying to Rappahannock and, um, setting up your appointment with your advisor is so that you will get a username and password so that you can log into your RCC account. And that's really easy to find. You just go to rappahannock.edu and you'll see a My RCC button on the front page. You can click on that and sign in and you'll be able to check your student email. But there's also a message center. So there are two places that you have to get in the habit of checking. I would check them both regularly. The message center is what financial aid uses um, to send you, a lot of our messages are automated, um, to send you messages that we've processed your financial aid, um, that maybe we need additional information from you to finish processing your financial aid. So it's really important to check your message center. And I'm gonna show you on the next slide how to do that. Um, on your message center, you'll also see a to-do list. And so <clears throat> one reason you may have a to-do item on that list is because when you submit your FAFSA, the Department of Education, they randomly select applicants to, be, to participate in a process called verification. And so essentially what that is, is whatever information you submitted on your FAFSA application, they want proof that that's accurate. They want to verify that information. So you will be required to submit a form or tax documents to prove it. Um, and so you'll have to do items on your to do list that let you know that we need additional information from you. And oftentimes, um, when you click on that to do item, it'll give you more information about what exactly we need, but also you can upload the document right from that screen. So that's a really um, good feature to have. Um, it makes it easy for you and for us, and it makes it efficient so we can continue on with process processing your financial aid application. All right, and if you'll go to the next screen, I'll just talk through some of what was on that last screen. Um, when you log into your My RCC account and you go to your student message center, this is what it looks like. And so I've highlighted the things that I was mentioning on the last slide. Up in the upper left-hand corner is your message center. And as you can see, there are three unread messages here. So it's kind of similar to email. It shows you you have some unread messages, um, but go ahead and click on message center and you can read those messages. Um, over on the right is your to-do list about midway down. This individual does not have any to-do items on there, which is awesome. Um, but if you do, um, that will, until you complete them, that will prevent us from processing your financial aid. So a lot of times, you know, I'll have students call and say, I submitted my FAFSA and I've been waiting and I don't know, and they haven't checked their message center and they, and I show them that they have to do items on their list and they're like, oh, okay. I was like, well, okay. So it, we're trying to get all students and especially new students who aren't familiar with our processes in the habit of 
checking this page regularly. Um, and if you have questions about your to-do items and exactly what's needed, you're always welcome to call us and we'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, down in the lower left-hand corner is where you can check your account inquiry if you click on that button. Um, typically, in the blue box that says you have no outstanding charges at this time, once you enroll, um, when you, it will show you your balance due, but when you click on account inquiry, it will show you your tuition and fees, and if we've processed your financial aid, it will also show you um, the highest amount that you're eligible for. Um, but there will be a big box below that table that says click here to see actual financial aid based on enrollment. That's key because what we award you is based on full-time status because we have to allocate that money in case you do enroll full-time. But if you end up enrolling half-time, your aid could be reduced by half. Like essentially, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be based on enrollment. So that will all become familiar to you once you um, get into your account and start playing around with the different buttons. And I encourage you to do that. Go ahead and explore and see what's, what's where. Okay. All right. So as you know, um, community colleges are much less expensive than four-year universities and colleges. Um, I just wanted to give you an example um, if you enroll in 12 credits for this fall and you have the information that we receive from the Department of Education after you complete your FAFSA, um, sends us your expected family contribution, which we call an EFC score. So this person has zero EFC, which means they don't have any money that they can, tr can contribute towards their tuition or cost of attendance for going to RCC. And so they would have the highest level of need. And since they're taking 12 credits, they would get $3,098 in the Pell Grant. Um, so just to give you an example, um, 12 credits, the cost of that is $1,927.80. And so this student, after tuition and fees is paid for, has over $1,100 left that they can use for books. They can charge their books, you know, to their financial aid account. account. They may need a laptop. They could get a laptop if you need it. Um, it could be used for living expenses or gas to get to and from school or uniforms, um, educational related expenses. Um, so, I know for myself, I attended Rappahannock Community College for two years, and I did not have any debt when I came out of here. Uh, it's the best decision I've ever made because I know people now who went to directly to a four-year school, and they have fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt, and that's not a good way to start out. Um, so much stress involved in having debt and owing that much money. Um, so this is a great example. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, so I, I wanted to move on to if, if you're a veteran or will be using veteran benefits from your parents' um, GI Bill. It's a little bit different. So non-veteran versus veteran. All right. Um, veterans, also, they can also apply for FAFSA. Or, you know, submit the FAFSA application. That's in addition to your VA benefits. Okay, so for your VA benefits, in order to access those, to use them at Rappahannock Community College, you need to go to the va.gov um, and apply for the veteran benefits. What they'll do is um, they'll send you a certificate of eligibility letter, and you need to provide the financial aid office with a copy of that because that, that is official um, confirmation that you have X benefits at X amount, and we can move forward with enrolling you in classes. Um, so then you would go ahead and apply to Rappahannock Community College and schedule an appointment and pick the program that you want to be in. Um, the extra step for you, um, besides getting that certificate of eligibility letter, is that when you meet with your advisor, you'll have the certification request for VA education benefits form. Um, and I've included a link here for that. Um, you and your advisor will need to complete that together. They're essentially signing off on those classes and making, you know, saying these are in the program. 
Um, and then we include that when we submit it to the VA to get re reimbursed for your tuition and fees. So those are the main differences. All, you know, all prospective students, whether you're a veteran or not, you will submit the FAFSA application, apply to RCC, and um, go ahead and meet with an advisor to, to figure out what program you wanna be in. And then the only difference for the VA students is that you have to get a copy of your certificate of eligibility letter and then complete this other form. The cert it's a long name, so I'm not gonna say it again, but it's the second, <laughs> second point down, um, but complete that form with your advisor and turn it into the financial aid office. I think that may be all of the slides for me, um, but there were just a couple more things I wanted to touch on. And Mary, if you have anything that you want to mention that I've forgotten, feel free. Sure, yeah. Um, we, had a, we had a question um, about what the Pell Grant can be used for, so I did put the answer to that in the chat. Um, it's for tuition and fees, um, what we consider room and board, even though that doesn't really apply at RCC. Um, I didn't say books. Uh, you can purchase a laptop with it. Um, and transportation expenses and things like that. So it isn't okay. exclusively tuition. Um, right. Also too, you had mentioned um, that the students can jump on tomorrow and get their FAFSA done, which is true. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned that that would just really apply to our high school seniors at this point. Um, if we've got juniors um, on the call, I'm not sure if we do or not, but you all would need to wait until October um, when the 21-22 FAFSA becomes available. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, well, I think that about covers it, um, except for if you're not eligible for financial aid, um, I, you need to know that we do not uh, offer student loans, but we do have a payment plan available where you can pay in full if you can afford to do so. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. And um, let me just repeat what Ms. Tomek said one more time. You can buy a laptop with your financial aid. Um, because we're in such a time um, as everything being remote and online, um, and even before now, a laptop is super, super, super important to your success as a student. Um, so you should prepare to purchase a laptop for college. Um, and so you can, if you have that financial aid available, you can use that um, to purchase a laptop. And our bookstore actually sells laptops. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is um, there was mention of financial aid. There was mention, of, well, Pell Grant in terms of financial aid. There was mention of veterans benefits. Uh, we have a payment plan and we also have a very strong scholarship program at RCC. Um, and so um, for this upcoming year, the, the deadline has passed for scholarships, but um, we have it out and available in the fall and into the spring for the next upcoming year. So um, even if you don't have scholarships for this year, but you plan to be here to complete a two-year degree, um, you can apply for the scholarships when they come out again and um, that one general scholarship application um, you will use to be considered for um, there are like 50 to 70 I believe scholarships available that that there's a committee that reviews for those scholarships so um, there are many ways to, um, to pay for college um, and you can make those funds stretch here at RCC. Um, and so now we're going to hear from one of our support services. We're going to hear from Ms. Christina Tidwell to talk about student support services. Uh, yes, hi. Good evening, everybody. My name is Christina Tidwell. I am the student support services counselor for RCC at the Glens campus. Uh, we also have our program director, Ms. Lorraine Justice, uh, on the line as well, uh, supporting us uh, and providing you this information. But just a little bit about SSS. We are a federally grant-funded program that's housed at Rappahannock Community College. Our main goal is to offer academic, financial, and professional counseling um, to students that are on track to earn a bachelor's degree. Um, we specifically work with three student populations and that's first generation or students using federal financial aid or students that are using ADA accommodations at RCC and we find that a lot of students that come to RCC fall into one of these three categories. 
And so through our services, we help students be successful so they have that opportunity to transfer out to a four-year institution. You know, the higher that you have your GPA, the more that you're able to accomplish at RCC, the more opportunities you have as far as schools to choose from or uh, scholarship opportunities at the four-year institutions. And so we work a lot with our students one-on-one -on -one while they're at RCC to help them reach those goals. So this is just a brief list of some of the things that we do. Uh, we work again one-on-one -on -one with our students. So we're only allowed to work with 175 students at any given time. So we do run on an application basis. Um, but in that one-on-one -on -one environment, we're really able to get to know our students, get to know your strengths and your weaknesses and really help you build on those and, and uh, improve in whatever areas it is that you're hoping to improve in. Um, we provide referrals to community resources as, as they're needed. Um, we provide academic and financial workshops throughout the year and we try to tailor those to the needs of our students. Uh, for example, if it's final exam times, which we, we just passed final exams, but we would have uh, offered a, a workshop that focused on study habits or test taking strategies. Uh, when it's tax time, we talk about uh, resources in the community on filing your taxes. Um, so anything that we identify as a, a common need amongst our students, we try to address that by offering um, information through workshops. Um, we offer tutoring through our program. Now RCC does have its own tutoring program, but our um, grant allows us to provide additional funding to that and extend those needs to students that are a part of SSS. We do a lot with career exploration. Uh, I work with a lot of students that come to me and they have no idea what they want to do uh, after RCC or, you know, 20 years from now, what is that career going to look like? And so we spend a lot of time talking about the big picture. Um, when it comes time for transfer, we work on a lot of details in that particular process. It can be pretty complicated. You know, the four-year schools, it looks a little bit different than what you're gonna experience here at RCC. And so we really wanna make sure that you don't miss any opportunities or application deadlines or scholarship opportunities um, simply because you didn't know. So we work one-on-one -on -one with our students um, really from day one at RCC all the way through graduation and beyond to make sure that you are um, fulfilling every step of the transfer process on time. Um, and I think what really uh, grabs the attention of our students are the trips and events that we do. Uh, we take, um, well, when we're on campus, I know right now it's a little different, so we've had to get um, creative in the way that we've provided our services, but when we are all back on campus, we will continue to offer our trips uh, to four-year institutions or museums and plays and other cultural experiences. Um, we strongly believe that in order to really retain the information that you learn in a classroom, you have to see it being used out in the real world. Um, and so our students really enjoy that opportunity to venture outside of uh, our local area and see what else is available out there. Um, so again, my name is Christina Tidwell. I'm the Glens Campus Counselor. We also have Mr. Um, Joseph Coleman, who is our Warsaw uh, uh, Student Support Services Counselor. Sorry, a little tongue-tied there. Um, I did want to mention that for all of our incoming uh, freshman students, we will be offering a summer bridge. This is an orientation program that we do every summer. Uh, it's typically three days. We're, now we're in the planning process, so there's going to be more information released about that. But if you'd be interested in participating in summer bridge as a new student, um, you are eligible to do so. Uh, please jot down my contact information or, you know, give us a call and, and ask for Christina said, well, I'd be happy to share with you a little bit more about um, what the dates are and what the activities are, but just to um, shed a little bit of light on what we do. We, we do a lot of workshops on what you need to know before you step foot in a classroom. Where are your classrooms? Who are the important departments on campus? Who do you need to talk to if this goes wrong? Or you know, we really wanna make sure that you are comfortable and confident on that very first day um, before you have to sit in your very first seat in your very first class and have to read a syllabus for the first time. We wanna make sure you um, have the skills to be able to do that successfully on day one. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Titwell. And I will say that um, I'm proud of Student Support Services for quickly adjusting because you all did a great um, virtual tour of the College of William and Mary. So um, even in a time like this, um, Student Support Services is there to help students. So we thank you for what you do. Thank you. Yeah, especially in a time like this, you know, we, that community referrals uh, piece has really um, become a main process that we've had to do students that don't have access to the internet or students that don't have access to food you know we we work a lot with community organizations to help um, fill in the gaps in those aspects too but um, thank you dr wood for your support we appreciate that you're welcome and now uh, we're gonna hear from um, our librarian mr dan ream oh, good evening everybody 
Um, my name is Dan Ream. Uh, this is the library website you see, I hope, on your screens. Um, I'm going um, that we're there for you. Uh, we are our online uh, collection, which are really the gateway to it right now. If you go to the RCC website, uh, you'll notice there's a blue bar across the top. You'll see the words right now, the words apply, contact, about, and so on. And if you keep moving to the right, you'll eventually run across my favorite word, uh, which is library. And when you click there, it takes you to this page that you're seeing right now. So finding the library is, is wonderfully easy on our website. One of the things, I guess I'll talk mostly about what we normally do as opposed to what we're doing now during the COVID virus. But I guess I should say that the COVID virus time is actually one in which our library has shined pretty well uh, because most of what we own on our library is online. Uh, when you do a search, this uh, screen in front of you, you'll see where it says search Primo near the bottom of the screen. Primo is the name of our catalog search, which also looks at a lot of our online collections as well. Uh, well, if you've ever seen our physical libraries at the Glens or Warsaw campus, each one is a large single room with about 20,000 books in it. But online, we have 200,000 ebooks. We've got 70,000 streaming films. And we give you a sense of the size of that. Amazon Prime is 18,000. Netflix is about 7,000. Uh, and we offer 70,000, 70,000 um, online streaming videos. Some of them are actually theatrical films that you'd pay money to see in a theater. Uh, many of them are training films or educational films that you can use for research on working on your papers, interviews with people, or things like that. A lot of things from PBS. Uh, but anyway, the point is we have a gigantic online collection, which during COVID virus is, is great because uh, you're not missing the physical things on our shelves. Now during normal uh, times of operation, if you go to the left side of our screen, the green box you'll see there, uh, these are links to some of our services, one of which you'll see there is home delivery. Now, since we're not there in person at the library today, we're not doing home delivery, but when we're back in normal operating mode, if you're a student at one of our satellite campuses like King George or New Kent or Kilmarnock, or if you're a student who takes only online classes, uh, we do free home delivery as long as we have staff at the library to provide it, uh, again, which we don't today, but normally we do. The idea is that if you're a distant student who doesn't come to Warsaw or Glens, you deserve access to the same collection that the on-campus students have. And the way we achieve that is by offering free delivery. That is, uh, we use UPS, we'll ship it to your house, and uh, it's usually just a matter of a day or two from the time you request it till the UPS man shows up at your house with any book or DVD from our collection. I wish we could do that now while we're closed, but um, again, that's something you can look forward to when we return to more normal times. Another service you'll see there on the left side in the green box is called Interlibrary Loan. And that's the service through which we will get you any book or video or journal article that we don't already have through our network of other college libraries. Uh, we get things from UVA, Virginia Tech, VCU, uh, and again, usually very quickly. So we will get those and share those with you as well. And again, that's a free service. The library, in fact, never charges you. We have no overdue fines for late books. The only time we ever charge you money is if you lose or damage something that the library owns. Um, so again, we don't have overdue fines, we don't charge for our services otherwise. And uh, again, we're trying to make our library as user-friendly as possible. You'll notice in the, in the little search primo box down there, I typed in the word coronavirus. And if you click the search button, I think this is where we go forward to the next slide, please. This is showing you our result for coronavirus. Now I did this search a few weeks ago, it's probably much larger now. But you'll see that near the top of the screen there, uh, there's the, the word coronavirus, and below that it says 170,808 results. And if you look over to the far right side of the screen from there, you'll notice availability. Every one of these is online, One had all 170,808 items. Now, some of these are journal articles, some of them are on the first item there, the coronavirus replication. That's an ebook, online access. So this entire book can be read on your computer or some of the eBooks you can download to phones and tablets. In fact, most of them you can. Uh, so the whole idea now of an online library, I think you'll be surprised if you're at all familiar with university libraries. My background is, by the way, I worked at university libraries for about 30 years before I came to RCC seven years ago. And the smallest library I'd ever worked in was VCU, which is 2 million books and five story building and so on. And 
The physical library, of course, is tremendously larger, but the online library is not much different. You, as a community college student, you get really good access to, our, to the, almost the same online collections the university students are getting. And that's a great benefit, I think. Uh, anyway, so that's the, um, the search tool called Primo. And again, to give you a sense of the, the fact that most of our collection is online. Can we go to the next slide, please? Ooh, it's loading a little slow for me, but there we go. It's coming in. There it is. We have an online date collection called Canopy, which is a film collection, sort of like Netflix. Uh, it's actually uh, much larger than Netflix. I mentioned earlier, Netflix is about 7,000 films at any one moment. Canopy is about 24,000, last I counted. Of course, I don't count them. I ask people who sell us this thing. But it's a basically a free film service for students. These are some of the theatrical films that you might see there. Um, last Black Man in San Francisco I'm seeing on the top road there. That was uh, playing in Richmond last summer. But anyway, you'll get some theatrical films. You'll see below that great courses. Uh, these are entire classes you can take online. Uh, there's a class on sound, how science fiction works, or historical things, psychology, medical things. And some of these are 10 or 12, or even 20 videos long, entire courses that you can take free online through our Canopy system. So anyway, this is a really neat benefit, sort of a perk of being in our college community that our staff enjoy quite a bit as well as our students and faculty. I think next slide would be next. Uh, we're actually I'm ready for the next one. I don't even remember if that's my last one for the library or not. Ah, oh, there we go. How can I forget? This is our, lab, our library staff. Um, this picture uh, is a little bit old, but it's the last time we had all of the library staff from both campuses in one place. Uh, so again, this is giving you like a picture showing you the Glens and the Warsaw Campus Library staff. And again, our top priority for every one of those people in that picture, and the newer ones we have who are not in the picture, is, is helping students. This is what we enjoy doing the most. Every person we hire, we hire because they love working with students, they love to teach, they love sharing information, and they're, they're pretty good at it. Um, so I, I recommend you use the library. Again, we're available right now through email and through uh, phone access, but uh, also we're in person as well during the normal times when the library and the campus are open. So anyway, I recommend you use the library, and uh, if you have questions, uh, I'll be glad to try to answer those. I think I'm done. Thank you so much, Mr. Ring. You're welcome. And now we'll hear a little bit about um, our tutoring service that is available at RCC. Okay, this uh, service is called BrainFuse, and it's available to all of our students who have access via their MyRCC account. It's available 24 hours a day, anytime the college is not on a holiday break or closed due to inclement weather, um, students will have access. And it's live on demand or by appointment, which makes it very convenient for students. All students have to do is log in, um, enter the subject that they are struggling with, as well as a particular topic, and someone will respond in a chat box um, and guide the student through whatever lesson um, they need to learn or need assistance with. And it's available in all subjects. There's some cool features in BrainFuse, like the flashcards. Um, it's called Flash Bulb. And if you've ever used Quizlet, it's pretty much electronic flashcards. And so they are crowdsourced by other students, but you can also create your own. So that way you can study um, anywhere that you are. Uh, BrainFuse will also um, allow you to practice for high stakes testing like the NCLEX for nursing, the Praxis for education, or the ASVAB, which is the military interest exam. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to go through each one of those um, tests and, and practice and get your skills sharp so that you can do as well as you possibly can so you can move on with your goals. Another feature of BrainFuse is the Writing Center, where you can get assistance with um, papers. So you can upload drafts of papers, and a tutor will give you suggestions on how to improve your writing. 
They will not write your paper for you. They will not rewrite your paper for you, but they will show you ways to improve your writing and correct grammar and punctuation. Another service that we provide through the advising office is disability services. So if you had an IEP in either middle school or high school or a 504, um, you would need to submit that documentation or bring that documentation with you to your advising appointment. And we will, an advisor will review that documentation and help set up the appropriate accommodations um, for you. Typically what happens when you um, request accommodations, the advising office will generate a letter that you can turn into your professors um, letting them know what your accommodation is. Um, and we recommend that you start that process very early and that you do it every semester. Um, your accommodations are not retroactive. They become um, current or effective the day that we know about them and the day that we get your um, letters back. Um, from your professors. You will submit a letter to your professor um, and that letter the professor signs acknowledging that they are aware of your um, accommodations and that they will work with you to provide those accommodations. And so we keep that on file in our office and you keep a copy for your records as well. Another thing that I really have to stress is that you must at the beginning of every single semester, schedule an advising appointment to get your accommodation letters to submit to your um, professors. Another cool thing that we do, especially when campus is open, um, is student activities. So some of the activities and events that we've had in the past have been game shows like you see featured on the slides where we actually are, students are actually encouraged to do fun, uh, silly tasks for cash or answer trivia questions. Um, and we also do big, big scale events like spring fling and fall bash, which are typically outdoor events that last pretty much all day where we serve free food to our students. We've had bands, we've had uh, comedians, we've had um, different uh, people lecturing. Um, so we try to offer a wide variety of different student activities. In addition to student activities, we have a student ambassador program where you have an opportunity to um, be a student leader on campus. Our student ambassadors assist everywhere on campus, including covering our welcome desk, as well as being tour guides for campus tours and orientation. And probably when we start, uh, start back in the fall, they probably will possibly be featured in orientation and information sessions like this as well. So that way you would have an opportunity to hear from a student's perspective as well. So we try to make it fun and engaging for you. And we can go on to the next slide. Um, we do have a women's softball team. And um, so if you play softball or are interested in playing softball, please reach out to student activities or let one of your advisors know and we can put you in contact with our student activities coordinator, um, Brad Hornsby, um, so we can get a, a team fielded for this coming academic year. Another um, association that we have is Phi Theta Kappa and Phi Theta Kappa is the honor society for community college students. And every student that has a GPA of at least a 3.5 or better is invited to join Phi Theta Kappa. There is an admissions or a um, 
fee involved in, uh, involved in um, becoming a member, but sometimes the college can help you offset those fees if you can't afford it. But we highly encourage students to join Phi Theta Kappa because it does give you an opportunity for additional scholarships um, that you can use for when you transfer to your four-year school. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Jones, for talking to us about um, disability services and tutoring and student activities. We really appreciate it. Um, just another plug here um, for our info sessions for next week, especially if you're interested in health sciences, workforce programs, need to know a little bit more about financial aid um, and or dual enrollment. So um, we have about 10 minutes left um, on our session this evening. And so we want to give some time for um, questions and answers. Um, and I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen so that we can see the folks that were talking so you can see our faces. Um, so you, you um, don't have to just hear voices. Um, so let's see, let me turn my video on so you can see who I am and um, we can jump into, well, actually, before we jump into questions and answers, I see that Mr. Hutt Williams is on the call. Ms. Um, Mr. Williams, did you have any comments um, about the dual enrollment program that you want to just preview for next week's info session? Hello, everybody. Um, this is Hutt Williams. Um, I thought that uh, Dr. Wood had uh, forgotten all about me, so um, but I work in the dual enrollment office with um, Dr. McCrimmon, who is also on this uh, call, and um, we definitely don't want to get into the weeds tonight because we are um, having a specialty night next Thursday um, at five o'clock, and we're going to go over the emergency placement, the emergency grading, how it applies to dual enrollment classes only. And most of you know what dual enrollment classes are, but it's basically where students get college and high school credit from courses they take into high school by a credential teacher. So um, my function in life is to work with students, not only with dual enrollment, but those that are interested in earning their degree or certificate while in high school. So I work with all high school students, nine through basically the first half of their senior year before I pass them off to the wonderful uh, advisors that we have that you saw in that picture earlier in the uh, in the program tonight. So um, and, and so that's um, so we hope that you will join us next week. Um, so we'll have a lot more information about dual enrollment and again about uh, uh, placement during this time that we're shut down and um, and and other topics. Um, um, students that have started dual enrollment while in high school and plan to come to RCC after they graduate high school and and a whole lot of other fun topics. So, thank you. All right, are there any questions? Well, if there are no questions, um, we thank you for attending our Getting Started Night this evening. Um, you can actually um, email us at getstarted at rappahannock.edu or advisor at rappahannock.edu if you want to connect with an advisor. Uh, we will send out a follow-up email to those who attended this evening um, just to give you the information on the PowerPoint slide that we shared um, and just to connect so that um, we can get you going and get started for classes. Um, we have some great offerings for both the summer and the fall semester. So um, I thank you and I hope that you all have a good evening. All right.